cooler temperatures, rainy days, and baking. They're made to go together, along with a good book and a cup of hot tea. If you're reading cozy mysteries set in England, well, you have to have some scones, or scones as they say it, to go along with them. So today I'm making an Americanized version of that traditional English afternoon snack. Hi, thanks for joining me today on Susan's Cozy Kitchen. I'm making chocolate chip scones, or chocolate chip scones, whichever way you prefer to say it. Let's get started with our baking. First, I have one and one fourth cup of self-rising flour. To that, I'm going to add three tablespoons of sugar. Just going to give that a quick stir. Next, I'm going to add six tablespoons of very cold salted butter that I've cubed in preparation for adding to the flour. Handy dandy pastry blender and just work the butter into the flour and sugar. I will have all the instructions in the description box below, so be sure to check that out after you watch the video. Keep working the pastry blender into the flour. Sometimes you might need to stop and scrape everything off the pastry blender so that you can continue mixing the butter in and it doesn't just have great big lumps. I served on Christmas morning with a breakfast frittata, a bowl of fruit, some coffee, some tea, some hot chocolate, whatever people want to drink. And then I also like to serve these um, in the afternoon. They're great mid-afternoon snacks. So there's all of the butter worked into the flour and sugar. Next, I'm going to stir in a slightly more than half cup of miniature chocolate chips. All right, once you have all the dry ingredients together, it's time to mix the wet ingredients. One large egg, a third of a cup of buttermilk, and two teaspoons vanilla flavoring. Whisk that together. Now, the fun part. Okay, make a well in the middle of your flour mixture. And then, then pour the liquid into the dry and then stir it. And you just want to stir it until the dough forms. All right, there's everything all together. Just spread that out so you have a nice thin layer of flour. And then just going to turn out the dough. Right. Then you need a little bit of flour on your hands. And I'm just going to let some of that get on top there. It's a very sticky dough. Just want to do a little bit of light kneading. Knead it a few times and then pat it into a circle. So be very, very careful because this is the most important part. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this into eight pieces. So I just started half across half across again, and then I'm just going to go through the point, there we go, and one more time through the points. I just like to scoot it over here onto my pizza pan that I've lined with parchment paper. Might go easier if I actually just pick them up. You want to put them near each other, but not touching. 
get them all onto your pan. I'm going to preheat this at 375 and I'm going to set it for 11 minutes. So I'm going to turn this on now. So turn it on, let it preheat. Once it comes up to temperature, I'll put these in and we will let the scones bake. The oven has come up to temperature, so it's time to put these in. They are done. Done, 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 done. Okay, they are very brown, but they're not crusty or burned, so I'm calling that a win. They're a little browner than I typically want them to be. I like them to be a nice golden. I hadn't planned to do any type of glaze, but since they browned more than I really wanted them to, I think I will do a bit of a glaze on them. I'm just going to do a quick basic glaze. I probably won't even use all of it. I have a cup of powdered sugar. To that, I'm going to sprinkle in some salt. I always add a little bit of salt whenever I do anything really, really sweet. To this, I'm going to add, there's one, two, okay, there's three tablespoons of heavy whipping cream, and then I'm going to add a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and then I'll just stir this together. And this is still a little bit too thick tablespoon of water and I'll just very carefully mix that in. Usually I do half and half which is much thinner than the whipping cream and it doesn't take quite as much to get it to the right consistency but I have this whipping cream that needs to be used so I decided to use it today but you could definitely substitute either plain milk or you could do half and half. If you wanted to add some flavor to your glaze, they use a different extract or you could use a flavored creamer. And we have a nice stream, so that is ready. I'm just going to drizzle this. over the top and I'm not putting a lot just a nice little decorative bit there and I'm just back and forth and I used maybe an eighth of what I made so I now have some glaze that I can use on something else later now I've got to come up with something else to make oh shucks more baking on this cold rainy day Cold in Central Texas means it's below 70 outside and raining. <laughs> but y'all, it, it was like the high was 72. We hit that just after lunchtime and now it's going to plummet into the mid 50s and um, we're all going to think that we're dying. So, you know, that's the beauty of living in Central Texas. The weather is really hot in the summertime, but the winters are amazing. <laughs> if you don't like snow and ice and all that other stuff, and I'm not a fan of all that other stuff, so I really like the winters here. Time to try the scones. Let's uh, break off the corn. I'll be honest, just a little bit disappointed in these. The taste is fantastic. The top, where it got a little bit browner than I wanted, is a touch dry. And um, the next time I make these, I'll know to take them out probably around eight minutes or so. Everyone's oven is different, so when you make them, start checking them early, and when they're nice and golden brown on top, take them out. That being said, the taste is fantastic. They're light, they're fluffy. There is the perfect amount of chocolate in them. The glaze over the top adds just that extra little bit of sweetness that's um, really desirable in an afternoon tea scone. You know, other than letting them cook an extra minute or two longer than I wanted, I couldn't be happier. Thanks for joining me today on Susan's Cozy Kitchen. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. 
If you haven't already, please subscribe and make sure to hit that notification bell so that you find out every time I upload a video to YouTube. Thanks for watching. God bless.